We got tons of big wrestling news in this one. WWE Netflix Vince McMahon plus a huge WWE return is in the works. We're going to talk about all that plus so much more right here on The Ango Show. Welcome back to TAS. I want to kick things off. Let's talk about WWE SmackDown. Uh, that's right. WWE SmackDown's got something really big in the works. It looks like they are in negotiations for a third hour with the USA Network. We've heard that they're going to go three hours with USA. Then we've heard after six months they might not go three hours. A lot of confusion here. Basically, what you need to know is this. WWE's three-hour runtime with SmackDown doesn't appear to be permanent but WWE may very well like making it permanent. However, in terms of those original negotiations with USA Network, it appears that those numbers and the finances weren't actually approved for three hours. It was approved for two hours. So there actually might be a change to WWE's television deal, which means WWE could end up getting even more money than what they're originally reportedly getting. So that's obviously really big for WWE. SmackDown being three hours is not a big problem for me. I've been pretty outspoken and pretty clear about this. Raw and SmackDown being three hours could actually be a good thing, but it is important if WWE is going to go three hours with SmackDown. It's important to me that they balance out the rosters. It's important to me that they actually make the shows beefed up and the same level of, of love that all these other storylines get. They will do that uh, when they introduce a third hour. I think it's really important for WWE to understand with a three hour episode of SmackDown, that is a lot of time. And there's not a lot of people on the roster. So I do want WWE to truly understand what they're doing if they are going three hours long. Three hours for Raw, three hours for SmackDown, two hours for NXT. That is eight hours of WWE television, not including NXT level up, not including WWE main event, not including WWE speed, which I guess doesn't really count because matches are three minutes or less. But the point that I'm trying to make is that is a lot of WWE content to get through. I don't want them to add more and more time if WWE is not getting to the point where everything else is really, really solid. Three-hour Raws have been very solid. Two-hour SmackDowns have been solid. But SmackDown's got a smaller roster, so they definitely have to fix that, and they have to plan, uh, you know, the right way they have to do it the right way so i'm hoping wwe goes about it the right way and i think they will i do think one thing that they can do is also do nxt call-ups that would be really good um that could be really helpful especially considering that there are so many people ready to already be called up that brings us to our next topic of today's video wwe apparently is bringing back the war raiders uh man this is interesting the viking experience the uh, how many names have they had? The Viking Raiders, War Raiders. Uh, yesterday, WWE Raw aired a vignette, and honestly, I even tweeted it out, and I was kind of confused because it says PFR, um, but the more and more that you look into this, it actually looks like those letters translate to WAR, uh, which people believe this is going to be the War Raiders. Uh, we saw Pete Dunne become Pete Dunne, no longer Butch. Um, hoping that WWE is doing the same thing with the War Raiders. Uh, WWE Triple H has been really good about booking, uh, you know, booking them, you know, as singles guys. And obviously injuries happen. It does get to a point where you have to wonder how is WWE going to manage that moving forward. Uh, Triple H needs to beef up this tag team division. You can't be bringing in Penta and Phoenix and Motor City Machine Guns. You can't have G.O.D. on your tag roster. DIY on your tag roster, the Street Profits on your tag roster. You can't have all of these great tag teams and then not enough focus in the tag team division. You know, I don't have anything against JD McDonough and Finn Balor, but they are the tag team champions. They defend the belt once in 80 days. You got to make this tag team division mean something again. So if I'm the WWE, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Bring back the Roar Raiders, have them go after the gold, build up that tag team division the way it should be built up. And most importantly, make sure people understand that the tag team division, you know, is actually the best tag team division in the world. Don't just say you have the best tag teams, book the best tag teams, put them on TV, do it the right way. And if you build your tag team division around the War Raiders, you could do some really, really cool stuff. Ivar was doing some great stuff as a singles guy. 
But Eric and Ivar together are really, really good, and the tag team division needs a little bit of love. And the final thing I will say about WWE's tag team division, this is huge, this is important, this is the thing that's probably the most important. They have not been featured on pay-per-views. And I think we've talked about this so many times, if you want your tag team division to be on pay-per-views, you got to do it in a way where the storylines are actually a big deal. WWE, you have the teams to do it. This is an area that can definitely be improved on and needs improvement. I want to see it improved, so make it happen. Eric and Ivar, War Raiders, give them the NXT vibe, okay? Give them the NXT vibe. And we don't know if Sarah Logan will come back with them, but it may not be a bad idea to keep her away from it. Let's see the original duo from NXT. I want to see the NJPW version of these guys. It was so enjoyable to watch, and eventually they lost their way, largely due to Vince McMahon. Speaking of Vince McMahon, ladies and gentlemen, he has spoken out. He has issued a statement on the documentary, plus we got some news about Netflix and WWE, so let's talk about it. Vince McMahon put out a rare statement. He says, I don't regret participating in this Netflix documentary. The producers had an opportunity to tell an objective story about my life and the incredible business I built, which were equally filled with excitement, drama, fun, and a fair amount of controversy and life lessons. Unfortunately, based on an early partial cut I've seen, this doc falls short and takes the predictable path of conflating the Mr. McMahon character with my true self, Vince. The title and promos alone make that evident. A lot has been misrepresented or left out entirely in an effort to leave viewers intentionally confused. The producers use typically edit, typical editing tricks with out-of-context footage and doubt, dated sound bites to distort the viewer's perception and support a deceptive narrative. In an attempt to further their misleading account, the producers use a lawsuit based on an affair that I ended as evidence that I am, in fact, Mr. McMahon. I hope the viewer will keep an open mind and remember that there are two sides to every story. With that being said, uh, Dave Meltzer was talking about how there were people in Netflix who were trepidatious about doing business with WWE before doing the before the Janelle Grant lawsuit. It was not like this was behind the scenes, this deal and everybody was drinking champagne about. There were people on Netflix that were not reportedly high on the deal, but they signed it. They went with it. But there were people who were trepidatious about getting into business with WWE, and if the lawsuit had been filed a month earlier, once the deal was signed, they were all excited and been announced. Um, listen, here's the thing. This is what I'm going to say. Netflix, WWE, some people will support it, some people won't. Netflix is still releasing this documentary, even though Puck News came out and said that Vince McMahon tried to buy the documentary rights back. I'm going to keep it very simple for you guys. The truth with Vince. There's two sides to every story. No, there's three. There's two sides, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. As far as Vince's controversies, we know what they are. We're still waiting for the legalities, and we'll, we're waiting to see how it concludes. As far as WWE and Netflix goes, Netflix and WWE, they want viewership. WWE understands that Netflix is not pulling this documentary off. Uh, Netflix is going to try to get views from this. At the end of the day, WWE is going to try to move on. It's a weird situation, but you have to wonder, how is this partnership going to be long-term? That is the thing I'm very curious to see about. Let me know what you guys think down below.